Greetings, everyone. I'm James Zaylor. I'm the Associate Director of Technology to Market here at ARPA-E, and today we're excited to welcome you to our information session on the Scale Up 2021 program. Um, for those of you that are familiar with, with Scale Up, we started digging into this in 2018, ran a, ran a funding opportunity in 2019 at $75 million, and we're really pleased with the quality and quantity of applications we received, and we're, we're confident that we could have another go at it and have a successful scale up program to continue the support of RPE technologies as they attempt to to translate their lab scale demonstrations and tech and, and successes into commercial products. So we're excited for you guys to be here today. Um, and today is really all about educating you, the community of stakeholders, inventors, investors, industry partners, um, as to what scale of 2021 is, what's changed, and um, and answer any questions you might have. So with that said, I'm going to ask Danny to cycle to the next slide. There we are. So first things first, I just want to point out that um, that the funding opportunity was dropped in in uh, in December. The funding opportunity document referenced here is the controlling document. So everything in the presentation has been reviewed and is consistent with that document. Um, we will be doing Q and A. Anything that anything that we we address during this conversation um, will be in, consistent with that document to the extent possible. But if there are any discrepancies, that document will control. So, Danny, next slide. So I mentioned questions. Um, we definitely welcome them. And in fact, you can start dropping them right now um, on the assumption that you took the holidays, the, the opportunity on the holidays to read through the captivating 77 page funding opportunity and have questions already. Please feel free to start dropping them in the WebEx chat. Um, the phones are muted, so we won't have to worry about that. Um, and, and please feel free to, uh, or sorry, if we don't address your question in today's in today's session, um, please do submit that to the email you see here. So this is the uh, the contracting officer general inbox at RPE, and we want to make sure that everything does get addressed. But we probably will run out of time. And to make to make sure that we don't have any uh, any mis mix ups here, we'd like for you to take the question that wasn't answered and submit it to that email. Um, there is on our on this on the uh, exchange uh, website. There is a general FAQ section for scale up. We'll be adding the responses to today's questions to that, and we will we will use the email questions and respond there as well. Um, I also want to emphasize that the questions you might ask today in the in the chat box will be anonymous. The rest of the attendees won't be able to see who is asking the question, and we will not reference you when we respond to it. Next slide, Danny. All right, so um, I'm about to take off here. Today's, I want to em also emphasize that today's talk is geared toward applicants, but it should have useful information for investors and industry partners. And of course, any investors and industry partners that are online right now should feel free to, to, uh, to log questions for us to, to answer. So with the rest of the presentation, Danny's going to hit on what we're doing with scale up 2021 the foa processes the process that changes over the last time we ran it how to partner and additional resources so with that said next slide danny i'm going to introduce danny cunningham danny is my colleague here on the tech to market team um, and is the scale up program director managing the uh the initial 2019 scale up uh portfolio of projects and was integral in the in the uh the drafting and formation of the next of 2021 uh, scale up funding opportunity and before i hand it over to danny i also wanted to take a moment to thank everybody else that's probably listening in from rpe and was instrumental in making this happen it was a team effort um we're excited to do it and thank you all for your hard work so with that said i'm gonna hand it over to danny Okay, thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you for that introduction and, and thanks everyone on, on the line who's joining today uh, to learn about Scale Up 2021. So um, before we get going, I'd like to give you some background on why ARPA recreated the Scale Up program and why it is a priority for us. Uh, and before I go on to that next slide, I just want to let everyone know that uh, the, it is being, this is being recorded. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, so when we think about the, prog the, the progression of energy technologies, we have to look at how cost and performance improves with scale. And as our, priority, as, as our primary R&D programs, we often set targets that far surpass existing technologies. So at RPRE, these early stage programs focus on supporting high risk and potentially transformative research. And as, as such, we expect many of these may fail in the process. However, some do overcome these challenges and are able to prove out the value and performance and implementation for their technology. And you can see just a few examples on this slide of how teams may not make uh, or catch up or be competitive with existing technologies, whether it's through team or not demonstrating the value, or even just from an implementation point of view of those technologies. So while the primary R&D programs cultivate potentially disruptive technologies and demonstrate proof of concept, an enduring challenge is that they could become, so to speak, stranded. And by the time our pre-funding ends for these technologies, there's still significant technical risks that need to be overcome before the they become market competitive. Given the magnitude of these R&D challenges, few in the private sector are, are willing to fully absorb this high risk. And unfortunately here at RPRE, we've come to realize that this can lead to high potential and disruptive technologies, never really making it through this scaling gap. So this void and high risk research area is where we plan to address through our program scale up. Through our own experience, as well as through discussions with industry and, and, and uh, investors, we understand that these high risk advancements are critical to establishing the, these very early stage technologies so they can compete with the existing technology, which is already mature in the cost performance, in cost and performance. Therefore, scale up will fund pre commercial scaling projects for those technologies successfully can make it through RPRE's primary R&D programs. So the idea is that success in these scaling projects will sufficiently de-risk these technologies and give them a push that they need to realize their true disruptive potential and become competitive in the, in the marketplace. So another important metric to consider the scale-up program is how we expect investment to change as these critical scaling challenges are addressed. What we expect is for our pre-investment to focus on high potential and high impact technologies that are too early for the private sector or have received insufficient uh, investment to reach their full commercial viability. So therefore, the scale-up projects demonstrate success uh, and the risk goes down, we expect to see a decrease in our pre funding, while we also see at the same time an, uh, an increase from outside investment this handoff space between RPRE and the private sector is where we've intended the scale-up program to fit. So this is an overview of the Scale-Up 2021 program. As, or, as always in RPRE, we have, uh, some, uh, we have a very, very long acronym, which, which you can read without me taking time to go through this for Scale-Up. As James mentioned, this is our second scaling and pre-pilot -pre focus program from RPRE. There's $100 million available uh, for somewhere between five to eight selected teams. And we anticipate that the federal share for the projects may vary between five to $20 million. Just in 2019, there's also a, a cost share component too. And this can be in the form of cash or in-kind contributions. And for a prime recipient, at least 33% of this can, needs to be the total project share. And for those projects and teams that qualify as small, small businesses, and I, I'd, uh, I again default back to the FOA language for the explanation of for a definition for a small business, for small businesses, this may be a, it has to be at least 20% of the total cost uh, project cost. Okay, so let's. Um, I'm going to go through the, pro, the, uh, uh, the, the scale up uh, process now, as I've given you an overview of the motivation and the program highlights. So we can talk about the FOA process and what, what it looks like for 2021. But I do want you to remind you, everyone on the, on the line, to continue to submit your questions using the WebEx chat bar. So this, so, so 
scale-up is it's three main phases. We're currently in the concept paper phase, uh, which, um, which where the concept paper submission date is January the 20th of this year, this month. Uh, we're, the next phase will be a, a full application submission phase. And then the final phase will be an, uh, uh, an all presentation phase where finalists will be able to present their, their uh, projects to the um, RPRI team uh, directly. And I'll, I'm going to talk about each one of these uh, phases in more detail. Okay, so we released the FOA in, in December of last year, December the 16th to be exact, and we entered into this concept paper phase, as I mentioned. This timeline here gives a, a, an overview of, of the times that are defined in the, in the FOA, and it will show the, the, the exact points at which uh, different aspects of the, of, the, of the application will be due. I mentioned that the concept paper phase is due on the 20th of January. And we encourage that where encouraged applicants will be notified, and we will enter into this a full application phase, the phase two. The full applications will be due on April the 27th of this year, uh, followed by uh, the final, the finalist phase, phase three, which where the notifications will go out in June. Finalist oral presentations will occur in July of 2022 and after which selections will be made in August uh, at that time when the negotiations for the selectees will begin. Okay, so now we've reviewed the motivation for scale-up program and given a quick overview of, of the process, I'd like to do a deeper dive into some of the more details, including the differences between scale-up 2019 and 2021, and into the topics we think will be useful for uh, awardees and also for potential partners. Before I do that, then uh, I just want to remind everyone to submit questions. I mean, you're probably going to get very bored with me saying this, but, but we just really do want to hear from the, from the attendees to make sure that we can address as many questions as we can today. So, um, Scale Up 2021 was designed to implement some of the key lessons learned from Scale Up 2019 to help really um, fast track the process uh, and, to, and to streamline it, streamline it too. So as a result, we've taken, we've taken out, we've changed some aspects and we've taken out some aspects from the last, some elements from the last uh, scale up uh, uh, award. The key changes are such, we've, we've taken away this uh, primary, uh, pr preliminary application uh, and we've replaced that with a concept paper phase. We've also removed the small business grant and workshop that we had in the previous uh, scale up for 2019. We've modified the full application to reduce long narratives, and we've introduced a team pitch video and a, a quantitative company project financials and metrics document, which I'm going to talk more about in a, in a few moments. We've also improved the oral presentation phase to provide greater clarity and guidance for the finalists to really help make sure that they have, they produce a very clear presentation of their, of, their project, of their project plan. One of the things we haven't done, we haven't changed the actual underpinning team structure, evaluation criteria, and co commercialization partner requirements, because we felt this worked very well in the previous uh, scale-up. And, uh, and as a result, that's, that's really going to underpin all of the evaluation process. So since we want the program to transition our pre-funded technology from the lab to, to um, or bench scale to the marketplace and into the hands of private sector, we've designed the program to target those that we think can do this the best, and that will be companies and industry. As such, it's worth mentioning that we're not accepting teams led by universities or national labs. Universities and national labs can participate as subs or license head technology. This is the focus of this program is to scale and ultimately commercialize technology. We want the company, we want company and, and industry-led teams. The other important criteria to highlight is that the companies that apply must own and control their own subject matter inventions or software arising from a prior ARPRI award. What I mean by this is that scale-up technologies must have been developed through ARPRI funding and that they must have developed something which is worth protecting and can be protected. And lastly, we view partnering as an essential to the success of these projects. And therefore, we're, we're looking for letters of intent from potential customers, potential end users, suppliers, 
and other value chain entities. And ARPARI wants to see proof from industry and investors that the technology has the potential to be true disruptor for the, and benefit their business. So now we're going to give just an overview, if you like, of the types of projects that we, we, we want to see uh, for Scale Up 2021. It should be pre-commercialization scaling projects that focus on technology integration that can really build on the innovation into a product or a service. We want, to, we want them to see building capacity. And this can include scaling a production line or, or to make a product that is at a volume that, can, that becomes cost effective in the marketplace. Validating performance and improving manufacturability is another two important elements we'd like to see particularly on manufacturing lines if they've never been, if the product or process has never been uh, 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 produced on a manufacturing line to that point. We'd also like to prove out reliability of products or processes at volume, and this is an important acceptance criteria for customer and also the markets that are going into and who they're competing with. So these are just, uh, these substantial, it, it, this will, we hope this will lead to substantial investments for the private sector and continue to develop these early stage commercial products. And these, I just want to leave this slide by saying these are just a few examples, and each project will be unique and have their own specific scaling requirements. Okay, so, so what possible technologies are applicable to scale up? Well, there's lots of possibilities. And, and on this slide, we tried to capture some of the possible candidates organized in eight general technology domains or, or sectors. While I can't really speak with any certainty about what we, what we will expect to see within scale-up, we do know that, 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 that since the, the pool of possible technologies is limited to RPE, RPE, what RPE is funded, it gives us a pretty good idea, and that's how we, we had the, were able to develop this type of graph. But really, we will expect to, we, we have, there, there could be a, any type of sector that could be represented for a scale-up project. Okay, so, so to give an, an idea of, um, of the team structure here, um, so this gives you, this, this, this will give you all a visual of how scale-up might look, teams might look and envisage, and envisage the prime uh, applicants for the, the, that could be startups or it could be small businesses. But having said that, we expect that there could be, uh, we expect a large number, we expect large and medium sized businesses proposing scale up ideas too. Then, if we go down to the sub applicants, we expect that we to see more universities and nationalists participating here. But certainly, small and large businesses can come in as a subs and, and, and at the teaming level too. And lastly, we want to see industry and private uh, industry and investor partners. And as shown here in the blue bar, you can see that VCs, corporate investors, original equipment manufacturers, OEMs, and also suppliers. But these are just a few examples, and we're really quite open to who a partner might be able to be. We'll get into more about the role of partners later on as I go over Partnering 101. But I just want to emphasize that we see having industry and investor partners as essential for a, a, a scale-up application. So the, the, the criteria for, for Scale Up 2021 is basically we decided to use the same criteria to evaluate the concept paper, the full application, and the oral presentations provided by the applicants. And these will be, as for Scale Up 2019, will be weighted equally. So the, the, the criteria areas will include project feasibility and technical merit, which will be a third. We expect a, a, a commercial viability, strategy, and impact as being another important area that we, uh, that we will assess, and that will be another third. And then importantly, team qualifications, experience, and capabilities, the third third, if you like. And it's these main areas that, again, underpinning what we, uh, what we will assume will be a very, we expect to be a very strong team application for, our, for Scale Up 2021. And again, all of these really will continue to emphasize and elevate the importance of the market potential and team composition. So now I'd like to highlight the main phases of the uh, 2021 application process. And first I'll go through the, the phase we're in at the moment, which is the concept paper phase. 
Uh, this is uh, going to be a four page document. It will, as I mentioned before, be evaluated against the same criteria as a full application. Submissions are due this month on the 20th. Uh, letters of intent from commercialization partners are not required at this stage, but we do, but we, but uh, if you do have any LOIs available and you can submit them at this stage, then we will be, this will help improve the quality of your application. So we've decided that this uh, concept paper phase will require less information from the applicants than in the scale of 2019 to help streamline the process. So next will be the full application phase. The scale of 2029 full application phase comprises of just two submission components, a 30 page project plan volume and letters of intent from at least one qualified commercialization partner. The 2021 full application will comprise of four components. There'll be a, a technical volume, again reduced in size, so a 20 page written narrative that will help describe the, the, where we expect to see the problem described, the progress to date for the technology, the team qualities, and, and the actual scale-up plan. We'll have a new element, the project plan workbook, which is an Excel-based document that includes critical performance scaling of financial metrics, and a six-minute video, which is, the, which is the second new element, describing the opportunity, team, and technology. And lastly, we are going to maintain and retain the, the letters of intent. And this is a letters detailing uh, industry or, and or investment enthusiasm, support and commitments for the project. So I mentioned the technical volume, the first element for the full application. We hope to see this as a written narrative uh, for the, um, for, to, be, uh, to include the, a definition of the problem and how the, the technology solves it, the progress that proves the applicant and technology will be successful, the qualities that give the applicant a competitive edge over the competing technologies, and a plan to achieve commercial level volumes and impact. And again, we've reduced the technical volume length compared to 2019, where in the key data metrics, uh, where in the key data metrics will be compiled in the project plan workbook, the new element. So the project plan workbook, this, this first new element, includes critical, will include critical performance, scaling, and financial metrics. We'll be asking teams to provide basically the original RPRE performance goals, the progress by the original end date of that original pr project, the current status of that technology now, and future uh, future targets. We'd like to see scaling progress, any scaling progress today, and any pro proposed targets. Any follow-on funding from the original RPRE award that might have occurred. I would also list any commercial partners and contact with contact information for those for those teams. Financial projections are an important element that we've added into the project plan workbook, and this will be. We'd like to see what the, the project would look like with and without RPRI support through Scale-Up 2021 to really help us identify the, the, the need and, and the advantage that Scale-Up is going to give the, uh, any applicant. We want full details of relevant IP as well here from IEDISON patent or license information. And we've also added in a project risk assessment. So the project plan workbook is gonna help us summarize the key data and metrics to really expedite the full application review and evaluation process. Second new element for the full application is the team pitch video. This is gonna be a six minute video that will help define the opportunity and team and technology. It should focus on describing the problem that the team is going to address, the proposed solution, and how it compares uh, with competing approaches. It should identify and target markets and competitive advantage. It should introduce the team, highlighting the knowledge and skills and the new capabilities of the team and how they're going to really be successful in, and the roles they'll play in the scale-up project. You can also expect to see a description of any strategic hires and partnerships that you might expect in your application 
and through your project if you're successful. And lastly, explain why the Scale Up 2021 award will, will substantially change the likelihood of this team's success. And I think the last part I think I want to leave with, the, with this slide is that we, we would expect the team shouldn't focus on time consuming activities that improve just the product quality, such as um, decor, lighting, or cinematic techniques. We're really interested in the video content and the story that's being told. So the letters of intent, um, again, this is something which we followed on from uh, Scale Up 2019. And this, this is going to serve to indicate the industry and, and invested in enthusiasm and support for the applicant and the proposed technology. High qu quality letters of intent will describe elements such as commercialization partner, uh, sorry, excuse me, the commercialization partner's relationship with the applicant, whether they're a customer, an end user, a manufacturer, supplier, et cetera the role of the commercialization partner in the project, the value of the technology that offers to these partners, and if, in, if applicable, the intention to contribute cash or in-kind project support. So for instance, whether it's a demonstration site, intellectual property, product up, offtake, et cetera, and also the amounts, if there are any, that, that could contribute potentially to, to cost share. I just want to leave the, the last thing with this, this slide is I just want to mention that commercialization partners may be included as, as members of the project team or as non-member non third parties as well. In the finalist section, in the final phase, the oral presentations, we've decided to, to uh, invite a uh, uh, a maximum of two team members represent, to represent the, the project itself. But in addition to the team members who will give the finalist presentation, we're also going to invite partners to, to interview. The estimated overall pr oral presentation timeline will be, will be as such. It will be an hour for the applicants to provide their project plan overview. We'll have a break. There will be some separate partners interviews for another 45 minutes after that. And then we'll go into applications, question and answers. We'll give finalists and their partners a minimum of two weeks to prepare for these oral presentations. And also there, there could potentially be additional questions that may arise during the oral presentations. And so, so any finalists should be prepared to provide a verbal responses to our pre at that time. Okay, so next uh, I'll go into a deeper uh, dive in terms of the uh, roles and expectations of, of from the potential uh, scale-up partners. But I also want to just remind everyone that please continue to submit your questions and use the WebEx chat bar for that. I can see a few coming through now, so that's very good. Thank you. Okay, so, um, so now for commercialization partners. So the definition of, of a commercialization partner is broad. And the idea is that we want our applicants to partner with, with potential customers, end users, and suppliers, et cetera. We want these commercialization partners to represent the viewpoint and needs of the target industry. And also that the idea being that, uh, that this will help ensure that market adoption for their technology during and after the completion of the scale-up pro project can occur, or is there a high likelihood of, of be a success We'd also like to see applicants pursue financial partners too. And these, but these aren't a requirement. However, if an applicant has both a required commercialization partner and an optional partner, that would be an important indicator that ARPRI will consider during the selections on, uh, on progression to the, the finalist phase. And these optional financial partners can be, can be investors, incubators and accelerators, just to name a few. The take on the, any investment risk with the goal that the technology will be successfully proven and commercialized. Okay, and, I just, and, and lastly, I think all, all proposed partners as it's, are required to provide a letter of intent to be included in the full application submission. Okay, so uh, I'd probably like to, to start a, a, an overview now and a review and a recap of some of the, of the highlights of the presentation I've just given before we go to Q&A. Uh, so again, please submit your um, please submit your questions. So, in these last two slides, I just want to do a quick recap with some takeaways for Scale Up 2021. 
So what we'd like to, 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 to leave you with is when you think about scale-up applicants, please remember this is aimed mostly for, for small, small businesses, but can also include large organizations too. When it comes to these small businesses and teams, they need to they need industry and they need to be industry and investors partners. In terms of the desired uh, scale up projects, they need to focus on pre commercial scaling. Uh, and also, when it comes to technologies, the possibilities are broad, as we pointed out, and uh, and that's really what is relevant and exciting for us. And lastly, the criteria. These criteria are technical, market, and team. We we feel this is the underpinning. This is the underpinning uh, uh, elements for making a very a strong upery uh, upery uh, award. So again, we encourage get, we encourage small businesses, companies, and industry to participate. We do have some uh, ident we do have some examples on the uh, on the Scale Up website. If you want to take a look at those from Scale Up 2019. But that, that, that will give people a good idea of the types of projects and participation that we had from the previous scale-up. We want to enable further technology and de-risking of, of pre-production prototypes. We want to emphasize the importance of market potential and team composition. And lastly, we want to bridge the scaling gap to realize competitive transformational product is being taken into the marketplace. So really, we expect uh, in Scale Up 2021, the finalists will represent the top R3 technologies and teams. So with that, I think uh, I'm finished there. I'm going to finish up with some helpful resources uh, that can help the teams, um, uh, get, uh, the, the attendees get really find any any additional questions they may, may need to have answered that it hasn't been that we haven't done in the presentation. Or, or if not, uh, are not covered in the questions and answers that come up. So uh, again, thank you very. I'd like to thank everyone for their time, and I'm going to go over to we we'll go over to the questions and answers now. So if you if you can just uh, give us a second while we start to compile a list, uh, please hang on, and we will start uh, we'll, we'll start that section too. Thank you very much. So we're just going to have a transition over to the slides. Okay, just one more, give us a, a few, another moment while we get some more questions in. My colleague Jennifer Patrick is just going to share a screen. Okay, just a second. Okay, let me just start then. I have a question here. Is the letter of intent similar to a, a letter of support, and does it need to be legally binding? Can you please provide a, a template or a LOI? And it says yes. Uh, the answer is yes. We actually do. Um, uh, it is similar to a letter of support. Uh, it doesn't need to be legally binding. So given the range of different partners we we're expecting from the 2021 project team, uh, these, can buy, these, can, these can be uh, teams that are providing project work, cash contributions, advice and consulting. We don't actually supply a template for this, so we're really looking for the applicant to, um, to work with their partners to, to produce a, a, an LOI. Okay. Um, okay, we have another question here. Is there any expect, expected duration or maximum duration of performance in this program? Is a five-year project possible? So the answer to that is that um, our pre awards uh, refer to a, pro a period of performance in the power, which is effective duration of, of the award. And uh, typically, 
we expect this to be in the in the range of 36 months. So typically, a 36 month project. Okay. I have another question. Is there a minimum threshold percentage of any total cost share amount that must come from commercialization partners? E.g., commercialization partners must in total contribute 30% of the total cost share. And the, the answer is no. The cost share requirement is is applicable to the project team in its entirety. So the prime recipient is legally responsible for contributing the total cost share. Each project team is free to determine how much of the, of the project team member will contribute towards the total amount. But ultimately, it comes down to the, the, the team itself to ensure that that total amount meets the, the required minimum for cost share. In just a second, I'll check through the list. Okay. I have another question on cost share. This probably follows on. Should we list all commercialization or financial partners or sub recipients to quantify qualify their costs at the, uh, as cost share? So all commercialization or financial partners need to be listed in the full application. A partner doesn't doesn't need to to be listed as a sub recipient. Sub -recipient to have any kind of cost contrib cash contributions counted as their cost share. A sub recipient may or may not be receiving federal funding. So that there's a good feedback there. Okay, just one second. Okay, um, what is the anticipated start date for the scale up program? So, um, file of selections are anticipated in August. Exact start date will depend on contract negotiations, which normally takes three to four months. Okay. Okay, so we need to, uh, need to next question is need to understand if funding is only available for projects funded in the past by ARPARE and not by EERE or DOE in general. And the answer to that is yes, it's correct. They need to be funded by ARPARE in the past. Okay, we have another um, IP. We have an IP question here. If our subject inventions are not in IDISM because our project was predated or, or was prior in IDISM to the IDISM rollout, can we retrospectively add them to IDISM now? And the answer is yes. Uh, and there are specific directions uh, provided in the FOA, uh, sorry, in the FAQ to, to actually do that. And we're going to post a, a, an extended FAQ to that. Okay, on to the question. Okay, so next question. Um, this photo focuses only on scale up and pre pilot projects of, promise, of promising the technologies that RPRI has funded. Does that mean that only RPRI contracts can be proposed to scale up? And it's a no. Subject inventions from current or past RPRI awards can be can be used for applications. So just to reiterate, no, we do we we will consider subject inventions from current or past our pre awards for these applications. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next one. Yes, yeah, so other examples of successful case study successful case studies and, and less and lessons learned. I think I mentioned that in the presentation, but but yes, there, there are. And if you could look at the Scale Up uh, 2019 awardee project descriptions on the, on the uh, Scale Up webpage, uh, you'll get uh, an example of the teams that are already under contract, and, and you get an indication of the, the types of pro uh, types of elements in those projects that made that, that ultimately made them successful. Yes. Okay. This is a, this is a, a, an important one to emphasise as well. Is a con concept paper a hard requirement for a full proposal sub submittal? Uh, and the answer is yes. Category yes. That is that is how you essentially uh, become uh, in the mix, so to speak, uh, for um, uh, for for the uh, in the running for for uh, scale up 2019. You must submit a concept paper phase 
a concept paper by the time the deadline I mentioned in the presentation. Okay, we have an IP question here, so let me just um, answer this. It's actually a manufacturing question, I apologize. So, um, domestic energy initiatives only. Uh, receptive to international ventures, nat natural resources um, uh, that are more valuable, most valuable, available outside the US. So, I, I guess this is asking, must the technologies from, from uh, Scale Up 2021 awards be manufactured in the US? Uh, and the answer is yes. So, Opry requires that all the products that, that embody uh, Scale Up 2021 inventions be manufactured in the US for use or sale anywhere in the world. The US manufacturing requirement is applicable to our pre funded uh, subject inventions that are incorporated into or part of 2021 projects, whether it's used from an earlier RPD research or or award or, or any award resulting from an ARPA, a scale up 2021 FOA. So the answer to that is yes. It needs to be in the US. Um, okay. All right, someone is asking that they've not received uh, the the FOA on on uh, in December of last year. Can we see, resend? Well, actually, you'll find that FOA on on the exchange page uh, for our, at the RPRI website, and and we have there uh, they, they were some of the result. Well, I showed that in the resource page. So again, that is um, that is available. The FOA is available on the RPRI exchange page. Just one second. There's a good question on nonprofits. Uh, are nonprofits permitted to, to represent consortium, i.e., be a lead? Uh, and nonprofits non may be a lead for a consortium. However, the consortium must include at least one for profit entity. Okay. Just one second while we get some more questions. Okay. Uh, we are a current ARPRI awardee, but early in developing our subject inventions. Would our proposal be eligible with not yet patented inventions? And the answer to that is if you have reported a subject invention, it may be used in a, as a scalar proposal. It doesn't need to be patented, but it needs to be registered on through iEdison. Wait, there's a more question. Okay, there's a question. Would state level funds that are explicitly awarded to scale up, uh, support scale up 2021 projects qualify as cost share? And the answer is, is yes. Funding provided by state level agencies is acceptable as a source of cost share. Funds provided must not originate from the federal government or be included as contributions of any other federal award. Okay. There's another question on um, on LOIs or letters of support. Our letters of support or commitment or letters of intent, as I call them in the presentation, submitted with concept papers, or what stage can they be submitted? So letters of, of support, as I mentioned, are not are required at the concept paper phase. Um, they can be submitted with the concept papers if they're available, uh, but they are required for full application, and that's to give the, the te teams and applicants some time to really build a, a strong uh, um, um, portfolio, if you like, because uh, we, we will accept more than one LOI of, uh, of letters of intent. And uh, I would uh, uh, direct you to the, the content and form section in the forward document for more information on that. Uh, 
Okay. Um, are certain technology areas prioritized for selection? And the answer is no. As I mentioned in, in, the, uh, in the presentation, um, we have, uh, we're open, this scale up FAR is open to any ARPURI technologies, irrespective of the domain or technology area that they come from. So we don't have a prioritized area, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's uh, storage or, or, or grid or, or um, uh, alternative fuels. It really needs to be a technology that has come out of ARPURI. And as a result, there's no prioritized area for selection. Okay, so another question on, on commercial partners. Um, do you think that the initial customers as a third party commercial part, commercialization partners uh, are potential, uh, are, are valid? And, and certainly a commercial partner is one example uh, of um, a, a, a third party commercial partner is, is certainly one example of a third party uh, of a commercial partner. So I think that one, that one sort of goes to reason. So yeah, okay. Okay, this is important. Um, can applicants speak with anyone from ARPRI before submitting their concept paper to, to understand whether it fits the program? And the answer to that is, is no uh, at the moment. Thank you. And the answer to that is, is no. Um, we are now what we call a quiet period. Once a FOA, and this is for any ARPRI technology, any ARPRI FOA, uh, FOA, excuse me, once the, uh, once the FOA is released, on, uh, then, then we are in a quiet period and we're not allowed to talk about any details of the FOA. The FOA is there to help you identify uh, what the requirements are. And also, I re refer you to the frequency, frequently asked questions. Okay, so I have a, a request here for a question. I'm going to uh, repeat this question. I think I might have, have mentioned it before, but I, I'm going to just repeat it. Um, must technologies arising from Scale Up 2021 awards be manufactured in the US? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, ARPRI requires that all products that embody this, the Scale Up 2021 inventions be manufactured in the US for use anywhere, uh, for use or sale anywhere in the world. Um, the U.S. manufacturing requirement is applicable to our pre-funded subject inventions that are incorporated into or part of the Scale Up 2021 project, uh, whether arising from earlier ARPRI research or any uh, award resulting from the ARPRI, ARPRI 2021 FOA. So, um, a Scale Up 2021 awardee may request a modification of the U.S. manufacturing requirement prior to or any time after Scale Up 2021 award is finalized. And um, a grant of any such request is at the discretion of ARPRI and GOE, and is based on a satisfactory economic argument. And the uh, negotiation of any alternative requirements that provides a net benefit to the U.S. economy. So DOE will determine whether uh, to approve such a waiver in light of the uh, considerations including, for example, an awardee demonstrating to the satisfaction of ARPRI and DOE that the U.S. manufacturing is not commercially or economically uh, feasible. And um, if not, whether there is a satisfactory alternative net benefit to the U.S. economy and if the requested modification is approved. Uh, so throughout a modification, uh, we, we actually may, rec um, through a modification, be requested at any time and any alternative benefits may be more easily measured and evaluated after technical advance may be more made under the wall. So we'll, that, there's something that we will take into we will consider, but with the terms that I just described. So I just wanted to make that clear. I think it was the second question we had on that. Okay. Let me just see. Uh, Okay, this is, uh, this is a good question. Um, we do not have a deep bench uh, on ARPRI wins, but we do have significant manufacturing, supply, manufacturing, and cost manufacturing capabilities. 
As such, there might be uh, opportunities for us to add value to a project without a commercial partner. Might there be such teams that need this kind of help in the candidate pool? And uh, that's that's a really good question. And um, I, I would uh, I, I would um, advise uh, and suggest that the person who asked that question or anyone who might be in that in that position to uh, please see the scale up teaming partner list on the exchange web page uh, on the RPRI website, and there's an, uh, an opportunity to sign up as in the partner list. Okay, one more question in here, uh, again around IP. Our iEdison invention is quite general. We have two different applications of the invention that we believe are strong ideas for commercialization. However, however the FOAS says only one application per, per iEdison invention. I'm double checking that there are no ways around this. So you may, you may be, yeah, okay. So. You, you may submit uh, one proposal per subject invention technology, and please, uh, please submit the proposal you think most significantly advances your subject invention to commercialization. So we can't really be involved in making that decision for which one that you, you need to choose, the, which is the one that you want to take forward. We've got five more minutes left. I just wait for some more questions to come in. Second. Okay, some, some of the possible scale-up technologies like software or grid modeling do not require the same capital as hardware manufacturing. Would technology seeking less than $5 million in funding be, be seen as less favorable technology seeking more? Says is no to, to propose the so no propose the budget that you seem appropriate in the size and scope of your project. I think, I'm just thinking, I think we have an IP question on that as well. Actually, we have an IP question on software, which I think is uh, follows into that last one. The technology we developed under the ARPRI project is a software technology. We understand that software need not require iEdison reporting or registration. And for software, I emphasize for software, that, that's correct. Eligible applicants may submit applications based on software developed and reported in technical reports or otherwise under the RPRI award. And that will be used in manufacturing as firmware in manufactured products or deployed on energy infrastructure or, or large scale systems. So again, please refer back to the FOA uh, in that section. There's, there's a description on, on, on reporting and in particular on software in that side, so that's good. This is a bit of a sort of a negative quote, but let me re rephrase this question a little bit. Can scale up applications not be funded, not funded, be updated and, and resubmitted? Yes, so so um, so this question is: Can previous scale-up applications from scale-up 2019, for instance, which is our, the only one we've, we've we've launched before 2021, can previous scale-up applications not funded be updated and resubmitted? And the, the, the simple answer to this is yes, they can. We understand that uh, um, that that there's progress is made within the period of the last 2019 and 20, 2021, and as a result. Um, uh, if, if it is, if, if progress is made, if new partners have made, if there's been advancements in technologies, and uh, an applicant uh, feels that uh, they would like to to 
to submit for 2021, this is permissible. Okay, so we've got a couple of minutes left, maybe just time for one more question. I'm just going to scale through the list, make sure I haven't missed any. Any more? I think we might be near the end of our of our question session, which has been very good. There's some really good questions here. Uh, again, I want to reiterate that uh, really the the, the, the FOA and the, and the FAQs will have a, a substantial amount of information to guide applicants in in their in their concept paper application that is due, and and of course for all the, all the phases of scale up. So um, please I refer you back to that. Any last questions? I think we may be finished here. Maybe one last cost share question. I think we'll be finished then. Does cost share need to be committed uh, at, the, at the time of the full application? And the answer to that is yes. Project teams must make a commitment to provide cost share by the submission uh, of the full application. So with that, I think we are at time. It's uh, it's two o'clock Eastern here, or just a minute before, and I don't see any, any other questions coming up. So I think I'd like to uh, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today, and uh, just remind everyone that again uh, that the um, that we have recorded this today, and uh, and as and as a result, you'll be able to um, uh, you'll be able to see this presentation. Uh, uh, in due course once it's posted on the R3 and Scale-Up website. And, uh, and also any questions that we didn't get to, because I'm seeing some pop up now, any questions that we didn't get to, we'll be able to, uh, we'll, 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 we'll cover it in our uh, Frequently Asked Questions document, which will be uh, posted on, on the Scale-Up website. Uh, so thank you very much for everyone for attending. I think it's uh, it's a very exciting time for us all at Arpari, and uh, and I think that um, uh, that, that we're, we're looking forward to some excellent uh, concept papers to start the the ball rolling, so to speak, to scale up 2021 for this year. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for attending, and uh, I hope you all have a good day. <laughs>